In fall of 2017, Teraflex released a newly redesigned heavy-duty replacement ball joint kit for the JK, 30, and 44 axles. Both standard and knurled ball joints are available. A knurled ball joint should only be installed in the event of repeated ball joint replacement causing a loose ball joint fit. Normally, a standard replacement joint is the best option. After lifting and supporting the vehicle, remove the tires. Loosen, but do not remove the nuts on the drag link and tie rod. Use a hammer to loosen the ball joints from the knuckle. Hang the drag link out of the way. We eventually completely removed the tie rod because it was in the way of the camera, but if you want to just support it, feel free to do so. Since we will be removing the axle shafts, drain the oil from the differential. Remove the plug on the back using a 3 8 inch socket adapter. Allow the oil to drain completely before replacing the plug. Remove the brake caliper and anchor bracket assembly. Support the caliper assembly so that it does not hang by the brake line. Remove the rotor. Dislocate the ABS line by removing the bolt and pulling the sensor out of the socket. Loosen the three bolts on the back of the unit bearing only until the tip of the bolt is flush with the unit bearing. Loosen the unit bearing by hammering the bolts. If you use an air hammer, make sure the tip of the hammer is in the direct center of the bolt, so as to not damage the bolt head. A two hammer method will also prevent damage to the bolt head if you don't have an air hammer. Remove the bolts and the unit bearing and axle shaft assembly will now move freely. Finish removing the ABS line. It's a lot easier to get this out of the way once the backing plate is loose. Pull the unit bearing and axle shaft assembly out of the axle. This is a good time to replace the internal axle shaft seals, if it is needed. Remove the cotter pins and then loosen, but do not remove the upper and lower ball joint nuts. Loosen the knuckle using a hammer. Use a ball joint press tool and remove the factory ball joints. The standard ball joint press tools should have all you need to get the job done. Remove the lower ball joint first. That will give you better access to remove the upper ball joint. Clean the ball joint bores and the area around the bores. We want a clean, flat surface for the ball joint to seat against. Apply grease to the ball joint or the bore to make installation a little smoother. Make sure that the upper adapter rests on the outer lip of the housing since pressing on any other part of the ball joint could cause damage to the inner workings. The upper ball joint installs from the top. The lower adapter should rest against the inner knuckle and not inhibit the ball joint's path. Because of the tight fit, our ball joint press tool did not allow us to use air or power tools on the upper ball joints. If you have to manually press in the ball joints like we did, put a little extra effort to make certain the ball joint seats completely. TerraFlex designed the lower ball joint to fit with both standard U-joint axle shafts as well as RCV axle shafts. When using RCV axle shafts, the grease passages must face away from the axle. We found it helps to mark the ball joint and the inner knuckle just to make sure the ball joint presses in correctly. 
The lower ball joint installs from the bottom going up. There are two grease passages. These must face the axle. Our ball joint tool has an angled adapter. It should rest against the angled part of the ball joint housing. Reinstall the knuckle. Remember to reattach the ABS wiring retainer. Torque the upper and lower ball joints to 70 foot-pounds. If the cotter pin hole does not line up with the notches on the castle nut, tighten a little more until the cotter pin can be inserted. Always tighten the nut, never back it off. Once the upper and lower ball joints are seated properly, install one grease zerk on the upper joint and two zerks on the lower joint. Reinsert the unit bearing and axle shaft assembly. There are plastic guides on the inside end of the shaft to help prevent damage to the seal as the shaft is reinstalled. While the backing blade is still loose, reinstall the ABS line. Align the unit bearing and reinstall the bolts on the back. Reinstall the ABS sensor bolt. Reinstall the drag link and tie rod. If you completely removed the tie rod like we did, then make sure the steering stabilizer bracket is centered on the tie rod. Remove the plug on the cover of the differential on the front axle. Fill the differential with gear oil and any additives your Jeep may require. Once filled, replace the plug. Terraflex designed the heavy-duty replacement ball joints to be easily greased with the vehicle on the ground. Use premium grease to ensure a long ball joint life. Fill the upper ball joint until the dust boot begins to swell. Fill the lower ball joint until grease begins to come out the bottom lip seal. Do not overfill the ball joints. The ball joints must be greased at the end of installation and then at every oil change. The lower ball joints are designed with an adjustable preload ring. If excessive wear becomes apparent and falls out of the factory specs, then you can tighten the preload ring. This should be done with the ball joints under load and the wheels on the ground. Loosen the three set screws at the base of the lower ball joint. Do not remove them. Use a supplied specialty wrench and tighten the preload adjustment nut to 70 inch pounds. Then tighten the set screws to 30 inch pounds. 